about um, um, really just considering your situation. Right. And again, when you when it comes down to what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve, a lot of times um, you don't realize how much work or how much uh, emphasis is put on what you have to do. We just assume if we just come and um, if we just you know hear and listen, then we'll obtain. But there are some things we all have to go through. You know what I'm saying? There's some things we have to suffer. There are some things we have to give up in order to obtain salvation. And uh, that's something I want people to be, you know, uh, considerate of. And I know, you know, it's a hard journey when you consider it. And you also got to um, consider that, you know, um, why you complain or why you um, kind of might get upset or whatever it is about how your situation is. When they tell you it's always somebody in the worst condition, it used to be a time you just say, you know, um, eat this. It's people starving. Well, though they say people, how many of y'all say people starving? Now they say people starving overseas. America always used to be kind of the pinnacle. Y'all remember they say it's people in other countries. It's kids in other countries who don't have what you have. It's here now. You don't have to, you'll be a fool to say what's going on in another country. You can talk about what's going on right here. They used to say that. You see here not eat, it's kids in other countries starving. You see here now, it's kids in other places would love to have what you have. It's people right where you at starving. It's people right where you at would love to have what you have. And um, and, and that comes in to make all of us consider, uh, consider your situation. Uh, a lot of times we haven't, you know, because of what they call the American dream, it kind of put us in a perspective of, you know, believing that we had things better than other people and looking like things only happened to other people in other places. Now it's happening to us. I mean, these disasters, these storms we see, it's happening right now to us. And even in, you know, in Georgia, it's just a matter of time. He coming through here. He's not going to leave no stone that they say unturned. He's going to leave no place that ain't going to um, take part of the habit that he's going to wreak on these places. But at the same time, it's a benefit because it come to make us consider, you know, and I, and I start to really consider when, you know, when you ask for things like salvation, when you ask for things like want to be closer to him, uh, want to attain more knowledge and, you know, in, in, in considering that, what does it take? What I have to give up, what I have to lose? What I have to separate from? What do I have to deny? You know, you can feel like you're in a good place now, but, you know, eventually you have to start looking at, I want to be closer. You know, so I want to be closer. I want, I want to know more about you. In doing that, that means I'm going to have to separate from something. That means I'm going to have to give up something. That means I'm going to have to deny some things, you know, that typically I've been feeling like, you know, wouldn't be an issue. But when you're looking at obtaining knowledge, there are a lot of things you have to sacrifice. Just like what people do when they go to college. Some people work and go to college. Some people have to give up working. Some people have to give up their houses and cars and go live with their parents or live with somebody in order to try to obtain that degree because they're looking at something greater. Well, we can look at that same thing when it comes to salvation. You know, it might be, it might be an arm. It might be a leg. It might be both legs. I mean, really, we don't consider, you know, I mean, you got to look at it. I think the less you have, the more, uh, the more you seek the abundance of Allahim. The more you have, you really don't need it. Like they said, for some people, say, it don't take a whole lot. I don't need a whole lot. So when you don't need a whole lot, how much do you really put an emphasis on obtaining salvation or obtaining getting closer to him? Because it's not a real need. When a crisis happens, like I'm in a the hospital, these people took blood pressure and everything, they're saying this is critical. At this point, I'm looking at whatever I got to do. I don't want to die. I want to get out of this situation. So a lot of times things we look at and we might, and we'll look at it as Allahim punishing us, Allahim um, destroying us, Allahim against us. But if it worked to our salvation, is it really a bad thing if it gets us closer to him? Just like Yahushua moot, his moot, his death. Is it really a bad thing? Because Christian churches teach it is. It was tragic what they did to him, and it was a horrible thing. It, it, typically, come on, that's how you look at it. That's bad. Why would they do that? But that was a good thing for us. I mean, things couldn't have worked out any better than they did. And it was tragic. Am I correct? It was a horrible day. It was gloom. That was, the Shamash refused to even shine because of how terrible it was. But for us, was it really a bad thing? Oh, well, the best thing could have happened to us. So now you got to consider, in, in looking at that, could it be that he wants us to see that a lot of times we've graded situations that happen to us as the worst thing happened to us in our life. But if it caused me to look at him 
in a different light, if it caused me to desire him more, if it drew me closer to him, was it really a bad thing? We'll go back over our past and say, oh, you know, had my life been different, what I could have made of myself, what I could have done, what I could have become. But if it got you here and it got you really seeking it, I'm talking about honestly seeking, not just get you, was it really a bad thing? But think about how we carried our past. It's things, I mean, it's things in my past I regret, you know, happen. It's things in my past I could have changed, I would have. But would I really have been here with a, with a heart? I'm talking about a real heart to say, I want that heart that you say you will put in them. Because I'm telling you, it's easy to read and you don't realize you're skimming. You're just really skimming. You're not really thinking about, I mean, you know, this man looked at what they said. I want that. I want that fear for them. That day when they heard him speak to them, those people were so afraid of their life. They were so afraid of dying that, you know, I mean, think about it. If I put a gun in your head immediately and I told you I was going to kill you, your kids, what wouldn't you give me? What would you hold back from me? What would you hold back? Nothing. So you think about those people felt like, listen, whatever we need to do so we don't die, we will listen to you. Because he knew these people weren't going to listen to no man. But if they looked at it was going to be a, a, on the account, of, it was going to be your life. You were going to leave him. And that fear, that willing, they said, everything that you say do, we'll do it. Because they felt like they were going to die. And it wasn't just a feeling. He came and confirmed it. He said, they right. He said, they right. They were going to die when I was talking to them. If they were going to refuse to hear you, I was going to kill these people. And he said, I want them to have that heart. That's the heart I need from them. He said, and I don't want it just this, at this instant. I want them to have it always. That this will be a continual fear that these people be willing to do whatever I say out of the mouth of you because they know it comes from me. You go, you hear what he said, you tell us and we'll do it. He said, if it was a heart in them like that, if they had a heart in them, that they would feel me, that they would do all my commandments, that they would do everything I told them to do. He said, them and they seek, they'll prosper, they'll multiply. See, the reason why we kind of find ourselves in this situation, for a lot of us, it take you to have losses to desire more. What do poor people want to be poor? Poor people want to be rich. What do sick people desire? To be sick? They want to be well. So let me ask you a question. Why are we poor? Why are we sick? Because he needs us to desire it. He needs to desire it. You know what I'm saying? But, and, and he put us in all these ways so you would desire better. Then you'll realize everything comes from him. As Dawood said, he said, I'm going to look to the hill from where my help coming, to the heart. He said, call all my help. And you know what he realized? What Yahuwah did? He made the Shamim and the Arats. It is to realize he looked, he looked at the person who I look for as my source, it's the person that did everything. It's the person that can do all things. See, the people a lot of times that we look to for things, they limit it. They're limited. I was, I think, like infinite. There are people, there are boundaries. There's a limit to what you can do. Uh, and and our, our goal is, I'm mean, finite. Is, and th these are the things that we're more or less looking at. We're looking at somebody that don't have any limits. The only limits he has is he can't commit to talk. That's the only limit he got. He can't fail. He can't cause all, he can't commit kata. If you want to know if there's anything he can't do, those are the three things he said I cannot do. If you give something to him to do it and complete it, he said I can't do nothing but do it. If you ask him something, he said I can't tell you nothing but the amount. Y'all got it? That's just it. And I, and I appreciate that. I need to know where I source my strength from that he's able to do it. Y'all got it? Now, whether he'll do it for me in that instant or in that time frame, it ain't an issue that he can't do it. It's just a matter of what his will is. Just like Yahushua learned when he was sitting there, he wanted to uh, escape the prongs of death. He wanted those hooks that hold you, prongs, you know what I'm saying? Something, something that hold you. You're trying to fight and keep it, but it's something that hold you down. He said, I want to escape it. I want to get out of it. He said, but it was imminent. He had to go through it. It was a must. So if he had to go through it, I'm looking at somebody that kind of paid away from it. It's still something you have to uh, grasp your mind around. You living to die. Can you imagine that? You living to die. You think about that fruit that grows on the tree from when it stems and it comes out. That fruit got a time limit. 
it got a time limit, and it, and it, but it produces a seed. I got the will of Elohim, okay? I got me. These are two struggles. These are two definite struggles. Because I don't want to die. You can forget it. I don't want to die. I don't want no parts. I don't want no ends of it. Because I just look at the, what, what happens when you die. How do you come back from death? What actually happens in death? You separate from everything and everybody and all the things you work to achieve are gone. But then you got the will of Elohim, which is more superior than my will. So when I say mine, it's yours as well. So with that happening, you have to wrap your mind around understanding what it is he's trying to do. And in order for me to continue to live, he said, you got to die. But I let you watch nature. I let you see how nature operates so you can kind of grapple your mind around and kind of understand it and realize that you're living to die in order to keep regenerating. Look at Yashara when they came. They kept regenerating until they got us here. And we're trying to establish the seed that's coming behind us. And that seed, when it fully matures, it realized it's going to reach a point that if it continues on, that you're going to have to move, but we're going to regenerate another group. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to follow the pattern of what happened in the gun. What he saw when he put the first ox there, the tree, as we call it, he said, I like that. I want you to continue to do that. Y'all get it? And I'm going to give you the ability that you'll be able to continue to That tree will continue to produce seed of itself that will go and it will duplicate, it will follow. Y'all see that? That's the problem we saw Yahushua come. That's all he was, something that we can duplicate, something we can replicate, something we can actually see. And he let us know how he felt about it like he did in the gun. He said, this is my odds in whom I'm, well, I'm sorry, my being. That's what he told me. That's the first time we heard him. We heard him. He said, I like, I like what it's doing. I like the direction it's going. I like it's obedience. I like it's stance. I want to I want to keep replicating this. So I'm going to take something from it. Y'all got it. That's why I said while we're here, it's our it's our job to leave a mark. It's your job to leave a mark here. And you might not be on a book room with these people. You might not be in a museum. You might not be posted on a stamp or anything like that. It's our job to leave a mark here that when people come behind us, somebody has something mimic to follow. It's a, it's a lot of failures out here. It, I mean, it's, I mean it's some, you don't even need them to example. People just naturally know how to fail. Any, anything people know how to do, they know how to fail. Take a newborn baby, stand up on their leg and let it go. What happened? You got to teach it that? You don't have to even teach it. See, the ability to fail is already in you. He want to give us the ability to stand. And what has to happen with that? You have to grow. What you got to do? You got to desire the sense of milk of the word. That you do what? The same thing with a baby. You're trying to get the bones strong. You're trying to get them maturity and get them to a level the way you can get them and you can take them. You get them to start to get them to stand and teach them how to use certain things, how to stand. That's why we do even with the bond. We use it to learn how to stand. And then later, as Shaul told us, that furthermore, as you receive of us, same thing you do with them. Get to a maturing state to where how you can walk. And you can please, you're not satisfied a parent when they see a child start to take them steps, how excited, they'll record or take a picture, they'll call somebody and tell them because they, they're pleased with the fact, I can see you growing. And that's the same thing he's trying to get from us. He want to see growth from us. But again, it's that battle that we always deal with where we fight self and we got the will of Elohim. So, I mean, don't, don't um, let it... Um, let it kind of uh, scare you off the fact that you had that fear of the unknown. Why wouldn't you? You hadn't been there. Any of you ever died before and gone ever? Any of y'all ever been to the grave before? Why wouldn't I fear? Why wouldn't I have some worries? Why wouldn't I have some hesitation about going somewhere I've never been before? They're like going to a strange place, a neighborhood, you just jump out. No, I, I don't know anything about it. Well, just get on out. You say, well, I don't know anything about it. the people. What goes on here? So when you go there, I don't know anything about the people. I don't know what goes on, but I know him. So my confidence is in him and the fact that he brought us somebody. You think about all the people that went before. These people were forerunners, you know, and, and they left nothing behind for people to really say, I know it's okay. You got what I'm saying? If y'all understand what I'm saying? For Yahushua, we found somebody that went and came back to tell us and testify. You know what I'm saying? I overcame it. I broke the prongs of moot. The thing that no man can break and he can, no th- he can get it to loose him, he said, I did it. The fact that before he did, he called Lazarus for and told him to loose the grave clothes. So all these things were to come to give us a confidence. Like we always go back and read and do it for whatever was Qatar before was Qatar to, to, which is to show us. 
I mean, teachers, we, typically we associate with going to a classroom, some getting written on a board or just reading something from a book. But the fact that Lumen is not only just, or teachers not only just, like they said, we had in school, we had show and tell. He's able to show us and to tell us. Because he know we're that type of creature. You can tell us anything. I need to see it. Typically, we kind of like people from, we were the Missourians before Missouri came. They call it the show me state. Well, that's the kind of people we are. The people bureau were like that. Because they were more aristocratic than the people that in Thessalonica. He said because they received the debacle, they were ready to hear it. But you ain't going to believe it, though. I still need to see it. They searched the Qatar daily whether those things were so. That's what he looked at. He said they were different than the people in Thessalonica. So that's what we're trying to do. We want to be those people to where we want to just search it. We just want to know whether those things are so. We don't have a problem with amounting a, 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 a thing or believing a thing. We just want to make sure what we believe in is right. Because everybody believes something. People out on the street, there's people out there that, that heard of it and know about the Shabbat. They don't believe it. There's a lot of people heard that the, the written name, the sacred name, they know it. They don't believe it. So, I mean, because they believe something. To not to believe something, to believe something else. How many of y'all believe in the boogeyman? Okay. How many of y'all don't believe in the boogeyman? So why don't you believe it? Because you believe something else. You believe it ain't real. See, people believe, I don't believe nothing. That's a lie. You have to believe something not to believe nothing. How, you, how, do you, how is it I don't believe nothing? That makes absolutely no sense. I have to believe something to disbelieve everything else. And that's the thing we're trying to do. We're trying to overcome that. That's a natural with us. To just not believe unless we see. We learned that with Yahushua, when he was time for him to go up in the seventh chapter of the book of Yahushua, they called John. He was going up to the, the Muhar. His Akim told him, except he go up. Which means they, what happened? Nah, I be, they believe something else. They believe anybody that don't go up and keep it. I don't believe nothing you say it. See, they did. They told me they ain't believe him because I believe something else. I believe that everybody that's over Allah is going to keep it. So if you don't go up, I don't believe. I don't believe nothing you said. And this is the thing that we're trying to make sure of when we say we believe it, that we have an attribute, we have action, we have characteristic that identify with what we're saying we believe in the keeping of, even with, you know, with the tassels we keep them. He said we put them on to, you know, as a, as a reminder, as a remembrance. He put something out for us. Even Yahushua, when he gave us Passat, he gave, he said, this do, if you believe it. Some people don't believe it, so they don't keep it. It's a lot of things people don't do because they just don't believe it. I want to believe everything that he gave us to do in order to obtain the salvation. I don't want just a, uh, a verbal salvation. I want one that I want. I want an intimate part. We know sometimes with intimacy is something that happens on the inside, but that's an intimacy that we have to have with Mr. Yahuwah. I want to make sure we have it, not in a sexual manner, but that intimacy with him where we know him. You know what I'm saying? There's a calm, there's a serenity with him. And a lot of times, these people are shake you. These people and these things will shape the very foundation of what you say you believe. When, when he even told her when tribulation and persecution come in because of what was it? Because of the word. He said, by and by. That's it. That's why I asked them before, does this also offend you? Also means what? Yeah. I notice a lot of things bother you. He said, so does this also offend you? So, and, and these are the things we have to look at. Not allowing things to come in and offend us to it, where it gets us off from doing what he told us to do. Yahushua started out, we know, with 84 Talmudim, but 72 walked off because something offended. That was a problem. That was a breach. That was a break somewhere. He knew it would happen. And it left him with the 12 that we know today that we look at that still stood with him, who understood that where they're going to go. You had a bar, uh, alum Kai. And you have to really believe that. A lot of people don't have it. You can walk, you can go. This, this is what hurts. You, you can make a, a decision based off of your emotions, uh, uh, based off of your desires. I guess you kind of uh, in the tail the same way. And, and you can let that drive you away from. And later you can, and you can start out and you can go for a while. It's just that thing of when he's coming back. When he's coming back. And when he comes back, how is he coming back? How is he going to recompense your, your failure? Mm -hmm. How is he going to come back to repay you for your disconnect? Will he allow you to reconnect? These are some things I just don't want to deal with. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be in that particular. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to be that person in there and I can't get back. And I'm trying to get back and I want to get back and I'm doing everything to get back. But he's already decreed you ain't getting back. 
These are things you really have to consider. When he's talking about sitting down and, you know, counting up the cost to see whether you have sufficient to be here. And I had to ask you why guys you here, just, what, you're trying to, what you're trying to get while you're here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, it's to our uh, benefit to make sure we get an understanding, make sure we do the will of Allah. Even for our young people, making sure they really uh, encompass this, you know, and get that understanding, realize you're not just here to just sit here and just see how long I can talk. You got to make sure you get this. You got to know the height, the depth, the width of Allah. I mean, this is what he did. Think about it. The height, the depth, the width. Who else, who else figured it out? Who else had to go into figuring? Okay. Abraham. That's what he did. He told him to walk it. I want you to know it. If I gave it to you, I don't want you to walk it. I want you to see it. I want you to know what belongs to you. See, a lot of times, you know, when Yahushua came in the 19th chapter of the book of Ori, y'all know typically I'm writing and putting down, but you just need to know it. Um, he wept when he looked over the city. He said, because they didn't know the time of their visitation. He said, and the time will come that your enemy was going to lay you even to the ground. He said, they're going to dig a trench all around you. They're going to lay your body there. He said, because you didn't know the time of your, your visitation. You know, and it's and it bad that we sit here and we don't realize they man coming back again for us. And we need to know the time I visited. Because he told us, he told Musha, he said, in the Yum, he said, I will visit them. He told Musha to go ahead and take them now. He said, but I'm going to visit them in their Katayin. You know they never knew that? They had no idea. You know how they figured he had forgot about it? Surely we had moved on and so many other things had happened and other achievements we made had paid for what we've done. He said, but I will visit them. And that's what we're trying to be mindful of. He's coming back here to visit us. He's not coming to sit down and drink no tea and see if we can kill a lamb and, make, and bake him some bread. He's coming back here for mosh pot, for all the things that every one of us have committed and we've done. So we're trying to work on making sure that um, we may, well, we're trying to reconcile. Can we look at what reconcile is? Cause to coexist in unison, make or show to be compatible. That's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. Y'all got it? That's what we're trying to do. We'll look at Matthew Yahoo chapter 3 and verse 7. Some we know, but it's the truth. Listen. All right, this is Matthew 3 and 6. And they were being immersed by his hand in the yard done as they confessed their contain. See that? And that's what we've done that. Y'all hear that? We've done that. We came to confess all of them. Now that's what they were doing. What happened? And it was when he saw many of the first sheep and the coming for immersion, he said to them, you brood of the who warned you to flee from the wrath who was to come. Uh-huh. And what happened? Of course, they are far in keeping with this repentance. So what are we looking at? Reconciling? Trying to get something that's compatible? Hello? What Hands, what do we learn compatibility? Compatible. Hands, hands. Chris beat you. I got a hard one. You just raise your hand. Somebody beat you in him. What y'all think? Chris or Darren? Darren. Darren. That type. Say it one more time for, so that to be two of them. Who y'all say? Chris or Darren? Darren. Darren. That's tight, Chris. What, what you did to these people, Chris? He did something. <laughs> what they hate you because what? Oh, my goodness. That's tight. Rod said, I said, oh, I don't understand. None of that. I don't really stay on the wig. What we got, Darren? Uh, Barra Sheet. Sheet. What happened to Barra Sheet? Uh, he got what now? He gave something that was weak. Yeah, that's right. I, mean, I thought he said weak for a minute. I've been pulling my glass. I thought my glass had heard it. No, that's it. But um, th that's exactly why we think about it. Now, he just told them to bring for, uh, therefore, bear Pari in keeping with repentance. So we, we start out talking about reconciling. So in reconciling, we're, we're looking at compatibility was one of the definitions that we found. Where it talked about harmony, which we talked about degree God, but we take the definition for it. So we start looking at something in unison, something that coexists or, or being able to coexist. See, a lot of times people don't realize why now in looking at that, because we look at reconciling, typically what he wanted us to do was to bring something that allows us to coexist. Now, when Adam and Ka'ul was in the garden, the reason he put them out of the garden, because everything in that, they didn't, it didn't coexist together. It couldn't exist together. You all understand? See, everything when he put it in the garden, remember, everything did what he told him, except for you two guys. That's why he had to 
banished them away from that. Well, vanished. We'll use vanished because they didn't leave in a prison in a prison type manner. But yeah, he he vanished them out of the garden simply because we couldn't coexist. Y'all understand that? So although um, Barashit would look at that as being Old Testament, he did declare, I declare the end at the beginning. So to teach us how important it was to keep things that exist or things that are similar. In elementary, some of y'all might remember, they would show you objects and you would circle the things that went together. Yeah. You know that right? If you saw a foot and a shoe and you saw a foot and a, a, and a coat, which one goes together? So get rid of the coat. It don't fit with the foot. So in doing that, he was trying to show us why he actually vanished them out. Because think about it. Did he get rid of everything in the gun? Just those two, because we couldn't coexist. So that's why we're trying to look at, he looked at these people coming. You're confessing. You come to be immersed. But what you're offering, it won't allow you to coexist with it. It's not in, it's not in unison with reconciliation. And this is what we're trying to learn now, how to reconcile. Because basically, why y'all think we're him? So what now? No, no, he said dimension. The ministry of reconciliation. <laughs> I was talking about in America. We here for why you why you in America? Who 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 been teaching you? Who your teacher? That man said no. But but no, the reason why we here because he looked at we couldn't coexist together. That's, that's why we, that's why you're here. You need to know that we can't coexist. Can we look up what coexist is, please? So we're going to understand all this, okay? Okay. Exist, look, exist at the same time or in the same place. Now you understand why you're here to get them out. Hello? Y'all understand? Y'all understand why he had to get us out of Jerusalem? Because we couldn't coexist. Not at the same time. I mean, it's it thing we didn't consider. I mean, I mean, it, these are simple terms, but when you look at them, it gives you a better understanding. He said, we can't be there at the same time. Hello? We, he looked at, there's no way we could be at the same time. You know what I'm saying? There's a map, those matters of things that come up that cause us to where we had to separate. So this is what we look at. Exist at the same time or in the same place. We couldn't do it. Hello? So now we're trying to come back and we're trying to look at these things. Let's look at our moose. Three and one. You ain't got nothing made up. We just come in and look at it for what it is. Let's sing. Listen. Shama, this, the bar, which Yahuwah has spoken against you, beneath of Yashara, against the entire Mishpachah, which he brought up from the Arats of Misraim, saying, you only have I known of all the Mishpachah of the Arat, therefore I shall visit on you for all your iniquities. So, uh, they go to visitation. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. He's looking at it again, let him know. See that? He said, look, can I read it again? What did he say? You only have I known of all the Mishpachah of the Arats, Therefore, I shall visit on you for all your iniquity. Let me, let me look at something. So in the gun, how many people did he know? How many other nationalities did he know? How many other tribes? I mean, Matah. None. How many did he know? One. Did he, he know anybody else beside them? No. So they're the only one he knew? Yes, sir. And he came back to visit them. Mm -hmm. He came back to visit them. When was it? Cool of the evening. He said, cool, you said they? What about the fact that it was after they had committed Qatar? Right. right. See that 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians 2. Is it 2 Corinthians 2 and 9? Let me see. We'll go down. 2 Corinthians 2 and 9. Let me see that what I want. Oh, here right now. First Corinthians. Two and nine. We'll go to six. Nine is what I want, but since it start off there, let's see if we kind of understand a little differently. All right. 
bless them. But we do speak wisdom among them that are of the holiness is not the wisdom of this arise. So he said we're speaking wisdom. We're giving information. And the, and the wisdom that we speak in them is not the whole, is not the wisdom that's of the world. Also, mm -hmm. not of the serene of this alarm that are brought to naught. Mm -hmm. That comes to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of Allahim in secret, mm -hmm. having well, been hidden, which Allahim. What we know about secret? Uh, unknown. Not known, unknown. Having been hidden, which Elohim predestined before the Yamin of the Alam to our Kabul. You see that? He hid that for now, and he said that wound up coming to our Kabul. Why would you look at that? Because now we're the people that it favored. That knowledge, that information that they didn't know, it favored us. Can you imagine that? That's the our Kabul. Imagine now we knowing things that they didn't know. A lot of things they didn't understand because they didn't know. These people more or less just operating. I mean, and I ain't saying that people didn't operate genuine. You could be genuine and still not know. But now he allows us the opportunity to be genuine and have information based upon we're reading. You know what I'm saying? From the assets of what people had, even from the losses, from the failures to the triumphs. All these things now we're getting to know. And, and he hit this. And a lot of people didn't even know it. And now he said he ordained that to our kaboom. He set that for us to our glory that we're coming along now and we're obtaining this. Listen. Uh huh. But as it is Qatar. Oh. Uh -huh. What is that? It was at eight. Okay. We're at eight. Yes. Which not one of the serene of this alarm knew. Yeah. For if they had known. What happened? They would not have crucified the Adon of Kabul. Uh huh. But it is Qatar. Things which the Un has not seen in the ear has not shone, nor have entered the lob of each what Allahim has prepared for those. Who are See that? They didn't even know Elohim had prepared something for those that are harmed him. And when he asked about it, if it was such a law, they would fit me all way. He prepared something for those that are harmed him. Come on. And to us, Elohim has revealed them through his Ruach. Mm -hmm. For the Ruach searches all things. Even the what? The, deep, the depths of Elohim. And that's what we look at. That's why we have to have the Ruach. Elohim is a Ruach. And those that had to worship him had to worship him in Ruach and in Amat. So it's important for us to obtain it because if the, if the Ruach searches, then the, the Ruach has the information that we need. So it needs for us to be here and we have a, and we turn over to a Ruach understanding, which is a spiritual understanding. If the Ruach searches all things, then we need that. We have to obtain that. That allows us that ability to know him. Y'all got it because the Debar, we found out the Debar, uh, Shaul said that he told us in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, he said that the Ruach was, what was it again? I'm sorry, that the Torah, what would he say it was? It was Kudai, he talked about him being carnal. So you're dealing with carnal people trying to obtain something that's Ruach. See what I'm saying? And they're trying to become Ruachni. So we need the Ruach in order to help us obtain that goal of what we're trying to achieve. Okay? All right, listen. For who among Anashim knows that of a Ish, except the Ruach of the Ish that is within him? For so who also, among Anashim knows that of a Ish? Except the Ruach of the Ish that is within him. That, was, that is the part we don't know. Those are the parts that we're trying to understand. How man kind of consists of body, Nefesh and Ruach. Isn't that something? That you built up into three parts. Yeah, how many people are you? One. And you can't believe it. And Allahim is three. One. And Allahim is three. Look how you look how you designed. Three operating systems. You had a flesh, you had a nephesh, which is your total existing one, and you had a ruach, the spirit that gives you the life. And yet you want individual, they'll listen, all they'll listen to the writings of Elohim and the different things that he say about or he explains in their operations, and then we automatically jump up as three of them. Hello? Hello? He told about him being the Abba, the Ben, and the Ruach. He said these three were one. You flesh, you nefi soul, and you have a Ruach king. That's why you're living. He said when well, he breathed into men, to man, what did man become? It gave light to your nefesh. 
And when you die, he takes that life away from you. He takes away that life existence you have here. But that device is still, is still a part as well as the flesh. And that thing going to the ground, it's going to burn if it ain't right with him. So these are things we're trying to make sure we understand. All right, come on. So also. Hold on, we ain't got that far. 12. We're still at 11. Oh, we still? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So also that Elohim no one has known except the Ruach of Elohim. You see why we got to have it? He said the things of Elohim, he said no man didn't even know it. He said except the Ruach of Elohim. That's the only one that knows it. So you see why it's important for you to obtain and get it. People, y'all know what'll happen if you're not careful. You'll just exist in a place and you'll just show up and you'll just come. And you won't understand how viable, how valuable the Ruach, the Ruach is of knowing Elohim. You won't consider what he's doing and what he's giving us. These people wouldn't have known that. These people looked at Musha coming and just speaking to them and just telling them and just reporting the thing. The Ruach Elohim, he said, that's what knows me. He said, me, in order to know me, I have to tell you about me. There's something about me that has to be demonstrated, has to be shown, has to be, has to be uh, spoken of in order for you to know me. So think about it. He said they all should be taught of Elohim. He said, because how else we going to know him? Somebody else going to teach us about him? <laughs> no, the Ruach. He said, that's the only way for you to know me. Otherwise, nobody know him. Nobody has the information. Nobody has the knowledge. And we have to we have to get this understanding to obtain it. And, and, and that comes with um, us denying ourselves, taking off, putting on. It is taking off, putting on. Look at Musha. For Musha to knew him, what did Musha to do? He had to take off. He did. He had to take off. He had to take off. He was the he was considered to be what we know, the second highest ruler in Misraim. And that when he knew him, Alahim came and revealed himself to him. While he was inside Misraim, while he was operating the second highest ruler. No, some came on his log. Some came on the log when he seen the people. And he considered a different end. And when he had came down and he wound up seeing one of us in a situation and he defended him. And he put the Misraim and he, and he put him to moot. He killed him, he murdered him, and he buried him in the sand. Musha fleed. He fled after he tried to separate two of our own Akeen that were fighting. He wanted to know why was it that two of us were fighting one another. He said, let the one that did wrong, let him be cast from among us. And no doubt like we always do, what are he going to do? Kill us like he did to Miss Raheem? So he fled. He said, surely this thing is known. But while he was gone and while he was keeping the flock of, J of Yathro, he wound up seeing a bush that burned. And he went up to inquire of it to see for himself what it was. And when he went up, Alahim let him know what he had to do. He wanted to take his shoes off his feet, off his regal, for the place where he was standing on. Gosh. You see how, and you can see how important it is that a lot of times we walk and we always shoot up. I think about get my wife, gonna start walking outside a little bit with our shoes off, then we'll come right and wash our feet and get in that bed now. <laughs> ain't finna grit that bed up. My car, but he's gonna wash them feet straight on off. But think about it, it's an energy source. It's an energy source. He could have kept on. If people don't realize, Daoud went up too. He was barefoot. We learned about how beautiful the feet of them they been. Daoud went up. When Absalom was pursuing him and fleeing after him, he went up on the heart and took his shoes off. Took his sandals off his feet and had gone up on the heart. That's why you know how beautiful the feet of the regard of them that bring forth the tidy, that bring forth the new, the tube news. Hello? So that thing we just look at, what he had to do, had to take off and to put on. And a lot of times, that's what we, what we typically want to do. We want to put on top of what we have. We like to cover. We like to mask. Versus taking on. They're like a mask you put on, you still got that same old face. He wants you to take off and put on. Hello? No, that don't make sense? That's right. Come on. Listen. And while, and while we read this other one, he'll hold me on. Um, see that Yahoo 1. Yahoo the first chapter. They call it Jeremiah. Come on, give me a little more of this. Come on. And we have received not the Ruach of the law, mm -hmm. but the Ruach who is from our Y'all hear what he said they received? Uh huh. So that we may know what is given to us by Allah, by his coming. All right, hold on. The Ruach of the alarm, but the Ruach who is from Allahim, so that we may yada. Is that yada? What he put in Nida? 
what is given to us by Elohim, by his, by his kind, his, his grace, it would say by his mercies. So that's, that's important for us to understand. Come on. And we shall not speak this in a language that shall lament the wisdom of the Bani of Anashim. But? In the language that the Ruach HaKadah lament and explains Ruachni in the Ruachni Dabarim. So you see that? So that's why it's important for us to get it. So now we get where we have a, the, the Ruach comes in and, and, and works as, in a sense as a translator for us. I think in the fifth chapter, I think it might be the fifth or the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, it started talking about how the Ruach makes intercession for us. So when we pull out and we say things or put things out of our part, the Ruach makes an intercession for us to kind of transfer over that language over to where Elohim receives it. Right. People don't understand that, but yet in about the 82nd chapter, I think, of the book of Tahalim, he said when he came through Mizraim, he said he heard something. He said, I heard a language that I didn't know because the Ruach wasn't translated. See, we don't realize how important this is. That's what he's saying in how we do things and how we look at things. He's talking about how we compare things. How we compare Ruachni? With Ruachni. With Ruachni, then, then we compare carnal things with carnal things. So that's why when it came down to him talking about coming and bringing forth something that would make them compatible, that would make something that could reconcile for them, make something or, or offer something that would allow them to coexist, then we had to go back and look at when offerings were done or when things were when offenses were done. So in looking at it, it gives us an idea or understanding of how we have to operate in order to try to be able to coexist or just to exist with him. Y'all got it? Or try to set ourselves up on another existence after this life. Because we've already, in some sense, screwed this one up. So everything we're doing there is not the work to keep existing in this life. It's the, that we might exist when he establishes his mouth anew. Y'all got it? Everything when Yahushua was telling us was when he was going to establish it anew. But in order to establish it anew, what was going to happen to this one? There was going to be both of these existing? They can't. He said it can't coexist. He said they can't operate at the same time. He said simply because of the reason or the rationale is because they don't agree. And those two camps stay together unless they agree. That's why he's got to destroy this one. He's got to create a new one where everything does coexist together because they all agree. Hello? Okay. He talked about all these things existing, the Abba, the Ben, and the Debar, and the, and the Ruach. He said these three are one. He talked about other things about the right. He talked about how these things agree into. The different, these, the, the Abba, the Ben, and the Ruach don't just agree. They exist as one. They coexist together. So we know how the world will agree into that. When it came down to Yahushua Mu, how that work? They all agreed on it. So we know how they'll agree. You know what I'm saying? So you can, yeah, you can all agree together, but this, you got to be able to operate to exist together. Y'all got it? Yes, and for the betterment and not for the worse. Come on. Give me a little more of this and we'll move on now. But a natural each does not receive the Dabarim or the Ruach of so, Allah. See, the whole purpose of telling you that to come back to tell you this, he told you what a con of man does. See, a con of man does what now? Does not receive the Dabarim or the Ruach of Allah. He won't take the words of Allah. Tell him why, son. For they are foolishness to him. Why y'all think these people out here, they don't keep the Shabbat? Why y'all think these people don't keep the dietary law? It's foolishness to them. That's why we think these people don't have a problem with adultery and fornication and kazab and everything that they're doing. It's foolishness. That's stupid. I ain't never heard that before in my life. <laughs> there must be some new stuff people can do. God, I know the God I serve, he don't judge people like that. All those liars. Everybody fornicate. Right. <laughs> I heard, I heard somebody told me years ago, you know they said, I, I, I was young, so we, I don't know how we come to the subject, we was just talking about it, not saying it. I heard somebody say, you know, you sin every day. Every day. And I'm like, no understanding, one trying to live around, I don't know how we came to come say, man said, when you breathe, you sin. You know what I did? I ain't no lie, I held my breath. He said, every time you breathe, you sin. Ain't that scary? Yeah. So this is no lie, I was just sitting there, I just hold my breath a little bit. Every, not, not long. You can't do it for so long. And it's scary the information you get from people. How, who would give somebody that information? That every time you breathe, you sin. Now, no doubt he got that information from somebody else of ignorance and intelligence. And this is why people never come out. He think about it. I'm, I'm teaching a, a, a message and other uh, the uh, Shars and other, you know, other the Charlotte King sent with him. We're preaching a message of uh, reconciling. And somebody saying every time you breathe, you're sinning. Right. So what's the use of coming? Right. 
Right. Ain't like you can live right. You got to breathe. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Basically, he set you up for failure by letting you breathe. Yeah, right. That's true. So it's just so much bad information that people are giving people and people hadn't really sat down and looked at this whole thing, you know, in the capacity of what it is and how he's allowed this to come. Because this is better information for us now than what a lot of them got. These forerunners, these examples that came through, these failure. Like now we get on planes for those that fly. We fly. We pretty much go where we're going. The first people that try to crash, they'd have liked to have been us. All those early attempts of failure or hurt and came to move, they'd have liked to have been us. So you imagine now we come along with a whole, with a, a better knowledge and understanding about it than they would have had. A lot of their knowledge would have came in the air. Uh-oh. <laughs> At that point, you won't be able to tell them about it. Other people got to go and pick up the scrap, no, pick up the, less, you know, the, the, the parts they can find and start to put together to try to configure why you crashed. Because you're not here to tell us. And Yahuwah had left enough information where we ain't got to just go pick up the missing pieces. We can go direct and find exactly, we, basically, this is the black box. When a plane crashed, they tell you looking for survival. We're looking for that black box. The black box will tell the whole story. They train a pilot to give you all the information before you go. Get past the fact you crashed. Tell us what's going on. You know what I'm saying? We lose an arrow. The, uh, one of the engine... Um, engine three went out. You got to get an engine a number so we know which engine we find and we can go back and look at. And we got to look at why did engine three fail? Why did they start losing air? We need to find all this out so when we go back, we start making correction so the next people fly safe. You don't know why you fly safe. They call the people that crash. You don't know why you get this, this opportunity to salvation because of the people that fail. Mm. Those people's story had to be, they had to black box it for us. Now we find the black box, which is the word, and we go back and look at it. I know exactly how you fell. But what was the cause? Hello? That's what I'm saying. They lost a the light. So was it really a bad thing? I don't get, when I get on the plane, you don't break out, bust out crying about all the people that crashed before I got on it. These people set away now to where it better informs the pilots that are coming along now. The, 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 the technician, the mechanics, they start looking for certain things because now this is something people date about. And they look, make sure you check this engine and look for these causes. Whether it's wiring, where it's a, the motor gets too hot. Whether, I need you to check these things because we had planes to crash before because of that. And we don't want these people to crash. That's basically all he did for us. He black boxed all these people failures. That we can come back through to make sure we don't complete or do the same thing. Like he coming through telling them, you think these people knew that? I'm a natural man. How am I going to understand the things of Halloween? I need the rock to know these things. We know that because they failed. And their attempt to think that their kind of understanding would keep a relationship with him. So what does that tell me? It lets me know your kind of mind won't keep a relationship with me because you will not be able to understand the things I'm telling you because you're a natural man. And a natural man is always going to oppose anything wrong me. That's stupid. That's crazy. That's silly. That's retarded. I never heard of nobody I know do that stuff. And guess what happened? Now I'm gonna receive moot. Cause what am I leaning to? How did he make E? Why am I leaning? I suppose we upright. Hello? These are the things we watch. You supposed to be upright. Why are you leaning? He told you if you're doing it, you got an outside protocol. You weren't supposed to be leaning anyway. They got a song, I'm leaning well. I only ever asked for that. I never told you to lean. I told you I made you upright. Even when they made other Elohims in the 10th chapter of the book of Yeremiah, he told you, thus say you who learn not the ways of the who? Heathen. Of the Goim. For the custom of these people are what? Amen. For that one goeth in the forest and he cut, out a, cut down an ox and he bring it, he deck it with silver and gold, he fashioned with nails so that it lean well. So it stay upright. So how do they know to make gods that sit upright? Why didn't let the God lean? Everybody knew to mimic the pattern. For people that's going to believe in culture's way, they always follow a pattern. They knew if they made it, it had to sit upright. This is what people do. People disguise the way. This will get us off. Look at something right quick. 13th chapter of the book of, uh, see if that's um, Olaf Malachim, 1 Kings 13 and 1. Now behold, there came an each of Elohim from Yehuda to Bethel by the Debar of Yehuda, 
while your bone was standing by the altar to burn incense. Mm -hmm. He sighed against the altar by the debar of Yahuwah and said, What did he say? O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah, Behold, a being shall be born of the Beth of Daoud, his Shem, Yoshi, Yahu. Let's do something. Let's look at what his name means. Look at that. Founder of Yahuwah. That's what his name was. So now, his name was only giving us a characteristic of what we were looking for. You agree with it, Bosh? They pulled up something wrong. They pulled up something wrong. Assure, you're sure. Assure. Okay. Foundation. Y'all see that? Foundation. So now we will have been looking for something like that. The meaning of found, the foundation. So Yoshia. Yoshia is what they call him. Founder of Yahuwah. Y'all hear me? So now you think about this. Now, when when he the cry, you can go back to the writings. When 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 he would have saw this, or when they would have heard this, and it came knowledge to us, this is who people would have been looking to follow. Yoshiyahu. Think about it. And it makes common sense. Hiyakra. We use you side for cry he put Yakra call against the altar by the debar of Yahuwah. That's what he used, not his own, and said, O altar, altar, thus said Yahuwah, behold, a Ben shall be born to the Beth house of Dawood. His Shem Yoshiyahu. So this is why you'll find a lot of time with these different religions. Everybody find a name, they start saying, see, y'all following wrong. You probably following Yoshiyahu. They don't realize we are following. Look at the meaning of his name. That's what we're looking for. Found it. Uh, can we look up what found it is? Definition. Think of how many times people run and read and grab stuff and they start naming religions after it. Everybody you follow, everybody you find, they all got a different name for him. Because you read that, that's all. You, see, he just gave him, that's the name. So y'all been following Yahushua. That's how y'all been wrong. Y'all probably been following Yoshiyahu. Established or originated or an institutional organization, especially by providing a endo, uh, endowment. Uh, endowment, I'm sorry, endowment. I don't know why I was thinking about uh, endowment when I was saying anyway. A plan and begin the building of a town or a colony. Construct or base. So all these things we look at, that's what we're looking at. Yahushua. It all makes perfectly good sense that we were supposed to look for somebody that was going to come from him that was going to be founded by him. Y'all got it? Yes, the same way we found with Adam. When we go through the third chapter of the book of Oriah that they call Luke, it'll start giving you the Tuladah, the generations, or who begot who, and it goes all the way back down to Adam. And from Adam, where does it go? Straight to Elohim. That's what we found with Yahushua. He is, not by name, but by action and characteristic. He's also Yasharal, simply because he does what? He rule as, and they worry about his name being um, Yasharal. Yet we look at his characteristics. See, just like with Yahuwah, we learn name or characteristics first. When we read in Barashit, it tells us that Barashit bara. Who? Why don't you stop and tell us about Elohim and tell us what he did? Because you need to know the characteristics before you even know the name. Hello? It was important for that. They had the association. The name is one thing. I need to know the characteristics. So when you tell me you distinguish yourself by you, you want to be distinguished by your name or by your characteristics. Because other people are going to think, Elohim ain't just a name that we use for him. We call false, um, quote unquote, gods, Elohims. But what differentiates him? His characteristic. Because guess what he realized? People are going to lie and say I'm him. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch characteristics. So he told me this man going to come. That's one thing. You can come and you. So anybody come in and say I'm Yahoo. Why y'all think people follow these cult? Notice these cult leaders a lot of times. They'll call themselves Jesus. What were you talking about Jesus? He's the son of God. 
He's the savior. So these people are giving his name because they know people will fall for it. And you'll go versus he was trying to tell her that there was one going to come from the house of Daoud that was going to be founded by Yahuwah. So I'm looking for somebody who was founded by Yahuwah. Somebody who was established by, somebody who was placed by, somebody who was made by, versus somebody just come out just giving me a name. Hello? Yes, sir. Yahuwah let us know what he do. He said, I kill. I also make a lie. I wound and I heal. And I stretch for my arm and I say, I live forever. Sure. So if it's all of him that died, they can't, I couldn't follow you anyway. Hello? Sure. See, they'll say, well, I know your mind going, because my boss won't send me down. Well, he died. Well, let's think about it. The flesh that you know died, not him. And we can safely say that because we can look at who? Who can we use for an example? Hands. Tight. Okay. We'll look at Yoshi. We'll look at uh, Joseph, who they call Joseph. Now, Joseph's clothes, how do they move? By themselves? Yes, how do they move? How do they operate? So did he exist before he put his clothes on or when he put his clothes on? So when he took his clothes off, did he exist when he took his clothes off? Yes, sir. So when she, he was accused of raping his master's wife, his Isha, she cried out and she called for help. The second time she cried out, she screamed so loud, she held his clothes. And what did he do? Yeah. He got out of his clothes and she still had him. So his clothes were dead. Did Yosef die? Yes, sir. All he did when he cried out the second time, he was on the two. He got out his clothes. He didn't die. No more. Deal. See, this is why we can safely say it, because I'm comparing things. The clothes only existed. Why? Because he put them on. Hmm. The same thing with the bed. He only existed because he put it on. The book let know he became flesh and blood. And you didn't believe what he did. And dwelt among us. Why? Hands. Hands. Let me ask you a question. When you do like this and do like that, you thinking of the question, you feel like you might have an answer, or you some, well, that's fine, I'm moving. I know it's more than one answer. Let's see. Let's see if it's the answer I want then. You on second, you on stand by? All right, tell me why. Hold on for a minute. You, I said on stand by. What you got, kid? What's your answer? What, tell them what that means. See, what, what people miss, in your tour you were told it. He said, I was going to dwell among them and walk among them. We couldn't find that. How can a Ruach dwell among them and walk among us? The only way he was going to do it, I was going to have to put on flesh and blood. That was your tour. He said, he told you, he said, I would dwell among them. Yes, sir. And I'll be their Allahim, and they're gonna be my own. Oh, yes, so the only way for this to happen, he was gonna have to physically come down here and do it, and he did it. That's why people had such a hang up with this man. That's why he kept trying to give his identity to us to let us know I'm fulfilling this in your hearing. Right. These people had a real problem with this man and what he was stating, because it was hard to believe that this man was Allahim. But he told you, I'm going to walk in there. I'm going to dwell among them. Mm -hmm. At 10 and 34. 10 and 33, you uka nine. And we'll come back over here. Make it 10 and 30. Your uka nine, they call John. I hear Cam in my hand. Hanu uka nine, hanu uka nine. Cam, Cam! <laughs> I know one y'all want to scream, y'all hear it. Cam, I know it ain't true, but it's almost like a coat like father. <laughs> <laughs> Call that the holler people. Prince, number one holler. Yeah. Why you on holler for when we be singing? When we put. That's tight. You need to bring something. You need to bring a plate or something and break it on this carpet. We can hear you. All right, this ten and thirty. Make it ten twenty-eight. Let's see what twenty-eight say. All right, listen. 
I give alum kai to them, and they shall not perish for all eternity. Uh oh, <laughs> listen. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. Mm -hmm. The Abba who has given them to me is greater than all. Mm -hmm. Therefore, no one shall snatch them out of the hand of the Abba. So, uh oh, you hear that? Now, how many people are you talking about? That's tight. For what, us, for what we would have known, what they'd have heard, they hear about two people. He just said nobody could take nothing from him. Then he just said nobody could take nothing from his father. Y'all heard one person? That's tight. You only heard that because you know that now. They knew that? I just told you that, so if Alex told me that he had something, nobody could take it out of his hand. Then he said his, his father is greater than all and nobody could take it out of I ought to make know he's talking about one person. Are y'all conscious? Ain't no way in the world people knew this stuff. You get a receipt, that's part of the advantage. You got the cheat sheet. Yeah. Hey man, Jay, I'm physically looking at him. Who is your, who your dad? Who's your dad? You talking about Yosa? Then he said, my father, great. This, two, this is a conversation about more than one person. Come on. I and my Abba, we are one. Agree in one? We are one. He said, I and my father, one. Come on. Then the Yahweh. Because one thing we know of a certainty, that the son was, what? Well, them joke, that's smart. They said, hey, Jim, Jim. I said, what? The part is, I know your voices. So when I back turn, I said, what that mean? What that mean? They said, oh. Dwight. <laughs> that's smooth, though. They be like, he couldn't possibly know who I was. No? I heard you about 15 years. I don't even know who you are. But that guy, we was at uh, Dunkin' Donut at that time, and got shot, man. I said, <laughs> I said, you remember me? He said, no, nah, Tony. I said, you should. <laughs> they laughed. Seriously, the man told me. He said, he said, no, nah, Tony. I said, you shot me. He said, oh. He felt like, who were there? Am I making this up? I said, they light that night. That car, car was coming. Yeah, I said, everybody light. That was the weirdest night. We had very the weirdest weird. night. No, I don't even be able to. I don't hardly go on Memorial Drive no more. Listen, then. The Yaudim picked up a Benin again as before to a bond him. Uh huh. And see that? They picked him up again, meaning what? They did it before. Yeah, a lot of his statements will get you killed. This stuff will get you killed, folks. Come on. Yahushua answered them I showed you many two works from the Abba. What work is it which. What work which is of them do you abound me? Mm -hmm. The Yahudim answered him, We do not abound you on account of a two work, Y'all but on account right. of your blasphemy of Elohim, mm -hmm. and in that you, being a niche, make yourself Elohim. Mm. What happened? Yahushua answered them, What did he say? Is it not Katab in your Torah? See, the only way you can get yourself out of this is to get them to understand. He said, Let's go back to the writings. What's in the writings? I have said, you are Elohim. <laughs> that man said, he said, what he said the words say? I have said, you are Elohim. He said, I'm the one said it. That you are Elohim. So what happened? See, one to whom the, the bar of Elohim comes is Kara Elohim, and the Katab cannot be violated. You see that? You can't go along that, you can't change that. That's what we don't let them know. When they was trying to fight him about him being a man, being the son of Elohim, he said, it's in your Torah. He said, I said it. That you were Elohim. Adam was Elohim. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. See, he could actually say he came out from the Abba. That's right. And see, we only learn that from how? Hands. Connor. Hands. What? What you got? From Adam. Tell him from Adam how. From the Adam mouth. I would have went with the eyes. And the reason why I went with the eyes because he told us about the eyes. What, what's significant about Elohim? Amazingly, the things of Elohim can be learned through all of the different things that he brought. Look at the eyes. You never. You can see two trees come, one separate. You'll never see two trees hunt. <coughs> lead, 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 lead. You don't ever see it. You ever seen that? Yet you see fruit come from it. 
So where's the seed? In itself. He had to teach us that. So the problem we had with him, we're trying to figure out who he made it with. Hmm. See, that's what he tried to tell you. He tried to get us to understand. He said, I'm, I was in the father. I'm in the Abba. And the Abba is in me. So just like with our son, your son came out from you. Your son also has a part of you in him. So there are certain things he will operate that will be similar to what you do. And we can see this carnally today so we can put that and wrap our minds around it. Because all the things we know, we know the things of a man. That's what he said. You know the things of a man. Typically, you know how it went. That takes a woman to come together with a woman in order for this thing to happen in this creativity. He said, no, he came out from me. He only came through by a woman. He only came through by a woman. He used a woman to let him come by. That's the travel center in order to come in. These are disciplines. How do you come into the world? Except from Adam. Except for Adam and Goal. You got to come in through a woman. That's your entryway into it. Hello? Just like right. things growing, they grow and they'll rise. You can say, well, I grow mine in my house, and you took soil from the ground. Right. You see that? He, so he, it's an operating system that we have to understand. So in understanding that, that the only way I can come in here as a physical person, I had to come through by a woman. They'll use test tubes now to try to, everything is to defy what he said. Yeah. Exactly, where do you get this egg from? Oh, right. And where do you get this semen from? The machine don't create the egg and the semen. Right. All you did is went inside of a woman and you removed it. Right. And you took the semen from the man and money and said, this is computer generated or from a machine because <laughs> you want people to believe it and you want people to be stupid. Anything try to defy what he done. Right. So these are the entries way and you didn't know it. So okay, now you come in, he tries to show, I'm a feminine. He lets you know I operate in a feminine for you. I tell you that you can't get into the male coot itself by me. The only way a man or woman get in the rocks, he got to come through by a woman. Hmm. So he said, well, the only way you get in the mouth cool, you got to come through by me. Yeah. Sure. So how do I have to view him now? So he operating in a feminist sense, because what do we understand? This ain't, now they'll take it. See, he a hermaphrodite, because that's the understanding. Which means you can, you can bear both traits. He bear both traits, though we're looking at from a ruachness sense. Yeah. You got what I'm saying? Not from the sense that they got or what they try to use. You understand what I'm saying? So we only understand it because we know that the only way a man or woman can come into the rock, they got to come in a by woman. a female. That's your only interest way. Just like when they claim they leave out and go out of space, they have to wait, they tell you they have to wait for a door to enter back in. They tell you, they can't just come back in. They tell you, you have to enter in a certain type of way in order for you to get in. And that's important for because we look at, in order for us to get into the Mount Kuta Alahim, there's a certain way we have to travel. That's right. We have to be knowledgeable of these things. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. So I, I appreciate that information. Okay? Let's go back to what we had right quick. In, uh, uh, Olive Mal Akim right quick. 13. Since we were talking about the uh, Yoshia, would you agree with that, Boston? And I was saying about his name being the founded, foundation of, and foundation is where you start at. Anytime you start to build, you gotta have a foundation first. Hello? Look at founded. Before you get that, see if that's the second, see if that's one, uh, Ephesians, is that two and 19, two and 17? Since I'm, well, since we're talking, I'm just looking at it. And the reason I ask, I want all of us on the same playing field, not that I ain't saying you weren't. If it's something we gotta correct, we wanna correct it because it's gonna be for the benefit of all of us. This ain't for Tony Smith, this ain't for nothing for Tony, all this. Is, what, where we been and where we come from, what we're trying to do now is align ourselves. Right. People look at stuff, they'll say, the stars align, how all these things. That is, it, a lot of things have to kind of play a certain pattern for things to work. Just like we're playing football, every play, I learned this years ago, I heard, every play is basically a play you practice on scoring. It's not a play on stop, it's a play, if it's a play we're trying to stop, we're trying to stop another defender from scoring. But every play is typically set up to score. You look, you say, that was a stupid play. If things work the way it's supposed to, we'll score. Everyone need play. It makes no sense to do the plays if it's not going, and we don't feel like it's going to work. We're doing it because if things align right, we should score, just like basketball. Mm -hmm. If we set this up, if you pick, when the ball hits your hand, and when you miss, they look at, yeah. <laughs> that's something you didn't do. You're thinking, I can't hit, but we practice this. 
when everything lines up the way it's supposed to, everybody do they supposed to do, it's supposed to work. Ain't supposed to him, it works, just like he set it up. Mm. But in life, we do stuff, don't it? Yes. It's practice. Nobody just say, God, just get out there and just have fun. No, no, no. <laughs> Pull your there. What we practice? Yes. What, what do we go over and over? What, what do we go over? Get the film. That's when you look stupid, when mm -hmm. film show up. Yeah. And you can stop it. What y'all notice? <laughs> we went over this. We went over this. Mm -hmm. Constantly going over this. That's why he have us constantly going over this. Yeah. So you can make sure when game day come, every player is set up to score. Every player is set up for the win. That's how he's set up. Everything aligns up. If we align ourselves the way it's supposed to be, it works. Mm -hmm. If everything aligns itself the way it's supposed to, it works. Just like when he set things up for them to leave out. He picked that time for a period, for a reason. It gave them more or at night. He told you, when it come, he said, when it evening time, he said, it shall be or or. You know something? When we learned that, nobody understood that. That made no sense. How can it be light and darkness? It can't, because it's Kashaw. He said, I set this, I line everything up to where the Yara, it reaches its full potential. When it reaches its full potential that it, that it illuminates, that's what I'm bringing you out. So therefore, you can still have light in darkness. It aligned itself. He'd have brought you out on the third, it'd have been tight, it'd have been dark. On the third, it's been real dark. Y'all been tripping. You've been falling. People been scared. They've been hollering and screaming. When they stepped on stuff, he gave you an order to walk. And then he went over you as well. To make sure there was no reason for you to err. Even when darkness can't. See, this is what happened to us now. That's why it has a problem when we committing sin and we look at, well, it was more of them than us. He said, I set this up for you. When everything aligns itself, there'd it be no failure. Yeah, who should say it? Yeah, though he walked through the valley of the, the valley of the shadow of What did he say he'll do? For what happened? He was with me. He, what else? That's right. That rod is also used to you to, to kind of coerce or to correct or to get. When they came out, they came out with rods or with the lung, didn't it? That's what they came out. What what were they leading out? That's right. They're bringing their herds out too. So everything was aligned to bring them out in the shadow. Listen, he knew it's dark. Why wouldn't people be scared? So the more light, the better. But I also brought them out under the cover of. So I'd also bring them out under, so everything had the line just right. He couldn't just bring it, everything had the line itself just right for this to be done. What looked like a failure for them, it came out to be just what it needed to be. That he could separate these people, and you know what to keep them from coming over to you? If I put a great gulf in between you. That's why he used, that's why he used the, uh, the yarn, the sea. He divided. Listen, they couldn't cross over to you, and you couldn't cross over to them. So he put a great gulf in between. Everything aligned itself right. Everything aligned itself just right. If you look at even the time period when they came out with it being there, you know what you'll find when you come out and the yard is up at its full strength? It, it, has, a, it has a way that it even uh, coerces animals, behaviors, and people, and tides. So during that time, the water even would have been higher. Yeah. Most of y'all wouldn't know that, would you? Because everything has to line up. You know how he learned that from? He told you that in the book of Yeshua, in the 28th book, in the 28th chapter. He said, line upon line, precept upon precept, he'll live, they'll live. He targeted them. See, you don't look at, you'll do stuff. Stuff got to line up first. It is. Sometimes people do stuff, you got to line. Your vocals, we can record, you say, you know what? Your vocals. You got to go back and got to get it. You got to fix it. You got to redo your vocals. You got to pull it. The, all these things have to work. They got to line up. And that's what he tried. All these little corner things you do. How else we going to understand how you do things? He don't just do things for no reason. He do it for a reason. He know exactly what he's doing. Hello? Yes, don't worry about it. Just that he's just doing stuff out of nowhere. Just like they say, he can do anything in and out of nowhere. No, he does it a particular way for a reason. He has a purpose. He has a purpose for everything he does. Y'all got it? Okay. Let's see what he said. Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, mm -hmm. but you are beneath of fellow citizens with the Kadash ones and are the beneath of the bed of Allahim. Let's see what he did. Having been built on the foundation of the Shalakim and Nabaim, 
Yahushua, the Mashiach himself, being the Rosh corner of Bun. See that? That's the one who founded it. So now we don't found Yeshua. They start to deal with the founders, start to deal with the foundation. It somehow had to be laid first. And we looked at where he came from, out of Daoud. So we had to look when things aligned themselves when it was time. See, our people looked at time and season two in the book of Kaga. You know what happened when they came down? We were going to try to build a built all of him. It wasn't time. It wasn't time. That's what he asked us. We were going to do it. We told him. He said, because even though we looked at time. We said one time, he said, time for, he said, but it's time for you to build your cell houses. He said, my house is a lot desolate. We looked at it and they brought it, they brought the proposal to us, said, you know what? It's time to build a Beth Elohim. We told him it one time. It one time. He said, but you live in your cell houses. He said, ain't time to build my house and put it back. It wasn't time. He ain't gonna believe what happened in the third chapter of the book of Galilee 4 and 1. When the fullness of time was gone. All he sent forth had been made. You ain't gonna believe how it was made. It was time. See, it was purposely done. He wanted to see y'all ready for it to come. We weren't ready for it. It ain't time. It just wasn't time. So therefore, we didn't see the reason or the need to do it. But in due time, he did it. He sent him forth for us. Because you know, he looked at everything lined up, even the constellations. He knew what he was doing. We didn't prevent none of it. You know, folks will tell you, he could have saved us earlier. He was going to save us when it was time. Everything had to line itself up. Everything had to line itself up. Y'all forgot what he told Abraham. He said he was going to deliver us in that fourth Tula Dolph. It wasn't time. When you go back and you check the Tula Dolph for him, that's when he came in your fourth Tula Dolph. He said, no, but certain I'm going to bring him out. He came in our fourth Tula Dolph. 42 to the dollar. You go back and start 42. You go back and start counting. You'll see when he came. Everything aligned up. See, we just look for things that just happen versus when we understand. Then we know what to look for. So a lot of people, that's why I was a problem with him. Because a lot of people looked at it. It didn't make sense. It wasn't time, when, even when he came. Because everybody always about what they're trying to do versus the purpose of Allahim. He purposed things a little different than how we look at things and what we want. He looks at more of a benefit to us for our salvation. We look at things we look at for just being a benefit to us for things we can have so we can be showy. He looks at being effective. Y'all got, he looks at being beneficial. Hello? Yes, no, right quick, let me see something. The sixth chapter right quick of first, they call first Timothy. Barnabas, all of Barnabas. See that six and one right quick. As many as who are under a yoke, as the Abedim upon them regard their own Adon and their own worthy of all Kabul. Mm -hmm. Say that. And they that have believers. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you forgot a line. So that the Shem of Allahim. I'm sorry. So that the Shem of Allahim and his Lamet be not blasphemed. A different word, go ahead. And they that have believers as their adenine, let them not disre disregard right. them in their own because of that they are a king, mm. but rather serve them because of that they are believers and Ahab ones. Ma'amin. That's the word they're using. Ma'amin for believers. Because it's plural. Yes, sir. Ma'amin. My All right. All right. That are the recipients of the two, these, these things, lament and encourage. Mm hmm. Teach and show and encourage this. Come on. The each who lament another Torah and does not agree to the Dabarim of our Adon, mm -hmm. Yeshua, Hamashiach, that is the sound ac according to the lament of the reverence. Hold on for Come down again. Ha, 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 ha. Sound. What do we find our definition for sound? Hands. Sound. Because y'all been told this more than one time, correct? Sound. What is it, Ryan? Firm. Firm. Something solid. Something hard. That's why you learn he was the chief cornerstone. 
to look at something sound. That means something firm. When you write your will, that's why you, they ask you the first statement you start off with is your name and you being of what kind of mind? Sound firm. Firm. Because that makes a difference. on. Because you, you're saying to give somebody something. What if you kind of lose, you kind of lose my absent minded? We can't go with that. So the first thing you need to state in your will is your name and then tell us what state you're in. Hello? That you need to be firm and you need to be solid. This is what he can build on. See, this is what people don't realize when they came down the uh, cuff. We asked who did people say that he were. What did they say? You hear him, Yahoo? All Yahoo? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Eli, I don't know who. And hey, guess what he didn't do? Now what? He didn't deny it? Okay. He didn't try to build nothing with that. Because you're saying things you're not sure of. When he asked Cuff, who do you say that I am? He said, you the Mashiach. You the being of the Kai Alahim, the living Alahim. He said, I, and you Cuff. You the being of Yuna. And, I, and upon this, I'm going to build my Adah. See that? Because you're solid. You're firm. You're sure about what you're saying. He said, I want to say. There had more than one answer. I want to say, no, he was solid. That's why he could build on it. See, from that, I can build on it. That's why he could build with Yahushua, because he was firm in what he said. He said, I know what I heard. I know what I seen. The Father showed me things. I know what the Father taught me. I know what the Father instructed me to do, and I've done that. He said, I can build with this man. This man's a builder. He came from Daoud. Daoud was a builder. He started the blueprints for building the Beth Ali. He just had too much dom on his hand. But yet he could build. All these people you follow the trait lines when he put, this man right here, everything gonna be founded upon. Everything gonna be founded upon this man. That's who we were looking for. This whole time we were watching, people kept saying, this is him. This is him. I'm telling you this now. I'm telling you this is it. This is it. No, you've been hearing about a lot of characteristics. These people had names because everybody was leaning toward him. Hello? He was the focal point of everything. Everybody we learned, that's why he had to go through it, go back through the tour over everything, trying to show them, all this relates to me. But they name, what is the meaning of their name? You want to look at what Allahim found it. Allahim, he, he established me. To show he found it, you said, he told him to sit down here at my right hand. He established him. He put him there for a reason. He purposed him for something. And that's what we're looking for, somebody that Allahim purposed for something. For the purpose of purifying us. Hello? He told us he was going to open up a fountain. Where? In the house of Dahu? In Jerusalem. Let's go look at it. Zachariah 13 and 1. So the old, this whole time, while he was here, when he got here, it's, it should have sparked our minds to go back. Thirteen and one. Listen. In that new a fountain shall be opened for the best of Daoud. And for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. For what? Qatar and for impurity. You see what I'm going to be looking at? Where are we looking for this mountain this found to open up at? Now you got to think about it now. Musha had opened up, or he had hit on a bun. He had a stone, and he did. Water gushed out. Somebody probably thought that was, that was not for impurity, that was for their drinking. See, a lot of things happen. If people are not conscious, they'll think that was it. See, that was Jerusalem. See, Jerusalem didn't have a name back then. And he told you in a yum, it was a day coming. He said, I'm going to open up a fountain to the Bethel in, in Jerusalem for Daoud. And this, and this fountain that was going to be open was going to be open for a purpose. It was going to be for Qatar for sin. For impurity. So you know what they could have thought? Someone could have thought it was the water, the water uh, you are done where Yucanon was immersing. Because what were they doing? They were confessing their sins. That's right. No, this one, Yahushua was on the two. That's when they told you they pierced him in the side. What came out? Dawn. And dawn was used to cover. The water used for purifying. That's right. See, all these were things that we were, we were supposed to watch for. We were supposed to be looking to see this happening. 
that when they pierced it, why did the writer tell us that Dom and water came out? Because we're letting you know what happened. So it were people, that's why he said they that watched, they knew it was Yahuwah. Why didn't, they, why didn't he say they knew it was Yahushua? They knew it because he told you what was going to happen in that day in Jerusalem. It was going to be for sin and for impurity. What else? It shall come about in that yun, declares Yahuwah of Sabaoth. What you going to do? That I shall cut off the shem of the idols from the arat, mm -hmm. and they shall no longer be zakar. Mm -hmm. And I shall also remove the nabaim and the unclean ruach from the arat. Mm -hmm. And it shall be when any still shall Naba again, then his Abba and his aim who gave birth to him shall say to him, you shall not kai. You're going to die. Why? For you have spoken falsely in the Shem of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And his Abba and his aim who gave birth to him shall pierce him through when he Nabua. Uh-oh. Ain't that tight? What else happened? Also... It shall come about in that yun that the Nabaim shall be, shall be ashamed of the his kazum when he nabur, and they shall not wear a hairy robe in order to deceive. Mm -hmm. But he shall say, I am not a, na a, a Nabi, uh -huh. I am an Ish, I am a tiller of the Adumah, for a Ish caused me to buy from my youth. Mm -hmm. And one shall say to him, what are these wounds between your hands? Yeah. Then he shall answer, what? those with which I was wounded in the bed of those who I, who have me. You see that? That's what the people felt like they were doing. They were killing, killing Yahushua. They thought they were killing him because of the love they had for Yahuwah and somebody come along and trying to claim the fame that he had. You know when he told you, he said no longer was a yeast going to wear rough clothes to try to deceive. Who are we talking about? You can, uh, you're cold. cold. You're cold. He took, he put a hairy skin on hair on to try to deceive. He tried to let you know these people try to emulate. These people try to come along, they'll try to deceive you. All these different things we try to watch and we try to pay attention to. He tried to let you know what you think these people did. These people took him and they gave him up. Come on, go back over to what we were here in the 13th chapter right quick so I can get y'all out of here. 13th chapter of the book of Olive Mal Akin. Let's just say this. Come on. Verse 2. Okay, verse 2. He saw again against the altar by the Debar of Yahuwah and said, O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah, behold, a being shall be born to, to the Beth of Daud, his Shem, Yoshiyahu, and on you he shall sacrifice the Kohanim of Rosh Malkum, Malkum, who burn incense on you, and Anashim's bones shall be burned on you. Oh. And on you shall Zabat, the Kohanim of the Rosh, of the High Malkum, who burn incense on you. Okay. Come on. Then he gave an ox on that yun, saying, this is the ox which Yahuwah has spoken. Behold. Hold on for a second. Do y'all get what he was just saying? Him telling him what he going to do? He was telling the altar. He wasn't crying out against the altar. He was crying out in favor of the altar. That's right. See, a lot of things had been offered up wrong on that altar. And he let them know what he was going to do to them. He's going to turn around. They're going to go right back on them. People don't realize Yahushua was the altar of Yahuwah. Hello? Yes, sir. We tell us about, let us offer up the sacrifice of praise. What is that? And we do it to Hushim. And Hushim. So Yahushim. his Shem is an altar to us. He's like an altar to us. See, what they had physically done carnally with that carnal altar, they had done to Yahushim. They put things on him that were false. They lied on the man. They mm -hmm. lied on the altar. Mm -hmm. They said that the altar was Bezabub. Right. They come back and let them know that you're going to wind up burning things on top of them. All these Nabi'in, these false Nabi'in, these Kohanim, he's going to take, he's going to burn them. He's going to burn men's bones. Don't worry about it. Come on. Then he gave an ox on that yun, saying, This is the ox which Yahuwah has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be split apart, and the ashes which are on it shall be poured out. Mm. 
So let me ask y'all something. So the altar shall be split apart and the ashes are on it shall be poured out. So when he was up on the two, what was the title reading? The Malacca who? Yaldin. What did it say? The Malacca who? Yaldin. Who did they want to come down? Mm -hmm. Seemed like they were splitting what they wanted. See, nobody would have paid attention if they put up tight. That kind of looked redundant. It looks ridiculous. The man, I mean, you see him looking at it. And why are you asking for the Malacca Yasharal to come down when the thing said the Malacca the Yahudin? That's right. Because he was trying to tell it was a split. Hello? And you saw his dumb, all that came pouring out of him. From the altar, from the offering, you have things that are left. That come out. That's what poured out of the dumb and the, the dumb and the mine. Mm -hmm. Come on. We're just talking. Go ahead. And it came to pass. Yes. When the Malak Shama, the same of the east of Allahim, which he sayak against the altar mm -hmm. in Bethal, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him. And his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up yeah. so that he could not pull it back to him. Mm hmm. The altar also was split apart, and the ashes were poured out from the altar, mm -hmm. according to the ox, which the Ish of Elohim had given by the Debar of Yahuwah. Listen. The Malak answered and said to the Ish of Elohim, Please entreat in the presence of Yahuwah your all, and pull all for me, that my hand may be restored to me. Mm -hmm. So the Ish of Elohim entreated in the presence of Yahuwah, and the Malak's hand was restored to him, and it became as it was before. Mm -hmm. Then the Malak said to the Ish of Elohim, yeah. Come to the Beth with me and refresh yourself, and I shall give you a reward. Mm -hmm. But the Ish of Elohim said to the Malak, If you would give me half of your Beth, I would not go with you, nor would I eat Lakam nor drink Mayim in this Malkum. Mm -hmm. For so it was a mar me by the debar of Yahuwah, saying, You should not eat no lakam, nor drink mayim, nor return by the darak which you came. Yeah. So he went on another darak and did not in, and did not return by the darak in which he came by it to to Bethal. Mm -hmm. Now in O Nabi was Kai in Bethal, and his banim came to came and told him all the deeds which the Ish of Elohim had done that Yum in Bethal, mm -hmm. the Dabarim which he had spoken to the Malak. Also they told them to their Abba. Mm -hmm. Their Abba said to them, What Darak did he go? Now the Bani had seen the Darak which the Ish, of, the Ish of Elohim who came from Yehuda had gone. Yeah. Then he said to his Bani, Saddle the Kamor for me. So they saddled the Kamor for him and he rode away on it. Mm -hmm. So he went after the Ish of Elohim and found him sitting under an oak and said to him, Are you the Ish of Elohim who came from Yehuda? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am. Mm -hmm. Then he said to him, Come to the Beth with me and eat Lakam. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go with you, nor shall I eat lakam, nor drink mayim with you in this malkum. Mm -hmm. For a debar came to me by the debar of Yahuwah. You shall not, you shall eat no lakam, nor drink mayim there. Do not return by going in the darak which you came by, which mm -hmm. you came by it. Mm -hmm. He said to him, I also am an Abi like you, and a Malachi spoke to me by the Debar of Yahuwah, saying, Bring him back with you to your bed, that he may eat Lakam and drink Mayim. But he sighed to, he kazab to him. So th this is something now. Now, now we get an opportunity uh, to be able to sit back and look at mistakes make that, that were made and how these are, these are typical mistakes that any one of us can make. Somebody coming to you want to trust that if they said that God, Jesus gave, why would they lie? Why would they lie? This wound up being this man's detriment. Mm -hmm. This wound up ending this man's life because he went back and trusted. Why would you lie? You just say he was in the bar. 
I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't go and declare something in his name. He hadn't said it. But to let you know how people have done things and people still do things today to get you off. And it gives us that opportunity now, now where we can sit back and examine. If Allahim sent something to us to do, he would never send the lesser to come along and change it. Because you notice, Allahim, he told you, I'm not going back because who told him? Who told him not to go? Go back. Now, Amal Akita came and said, do different. He would never send a lesser to come and tell us something that he told us. See what I'm saying? But guess when we learned this mistake, though? At who expense? Guess who would like to be sitting here and learn that right now? And it'd be us being an example. So I, I kind of went just to show you how critical it is that we've done things in just total blundering idiot, in idiocy, and yet now we look at it, you like, how can I make that mistake? How did I fall for that? He can't say that. It wound up being his moot. See, another thing when we were reading, when he told you what Yahuwah had told him to do in that place, what he told him to do? Do what? Eat or drink. And what else to do? So when Yahushua sat down with them and they got ready to tape us out, he told them with desire, desire to eat it with you. But he wouldn't do it. Nor would he drink it. He ain't going to believe it when he moved. He didn't go back through Marine womb either. He was told, don't go back the way you came. That's why they watched him in the cloud receive him out of his sight. That's not how he came. Remember, the man was from Yehuda. See, all these things were set up for him as well at protocol, just in case you decide to get out of the way. Just decide, if you decide on your own to pick your own way, if you decide to allow something to come in and, 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 and bother your mind and make you feel like, you know, you'll still be okay if you go contrary, these people gone. I cut every one of these people off that went a different way. When I tell y'all the value of what we have today that you guys don't realize and, and how the people that gone before, how they would like to be the people sitting here getting this, going back over playbook, realize this was a bad play. This was a bad play. And you know when he found out this? Not while he was walking, where he was starting out, where he could say, thank you, Jesus. You stopped me before I went too far. This man came back to the house, sat down and ate and drank and found out he waited till the transgression was fulfilled to let him know. He said, then you who will tell you to do something. He said, I'll march you to do something. You th this ain't when, like, I'm finna, whoo, thank you, I didn't eat it. I almost ate that thing. We ought to be messed up. He let this man eat, and he let him drink, and he let him make it all the way back there to sit there to let him know now, now you got to walk out of here and know, I'm going to visit you. I'm going to visit, but this again, when you really don't have the relationship with him that we should have. When I say that, we know some parts, but not enough to where we don't examine things before we get ourselves into it and realize what's going to be the altercation if it goes wrong. I need to know what's going to happen. You need to know if Allahim gave you something to do, you don't let nobody tell you nothing different than that. Now we learn it. Through who? His fall. Through how many other people fall from Balaam fall? Somebody offer you like, I got people in here that stopped coming to serve called they job. Balaam was told not to do something, but the job. The man, because he told him he was going to promote him. He had a promotion coming. Yeah. He told him, he said, I'm going to promote you. That man looked at that. I mean, the Lord understand, because really, it ain't coming here. It's what's in here. <laughs> Plus, if I get promoted, I can hire other people. Now, God would definitely like that, that I'm bringing, listen, I'm getting people jobs. Now I'm in position, I can make the city, I can change things, and eventually I can get people to start keeping Shabbat. And Yahuwah said, yeah, he, he said, that man, he love the way of, of unrighteousness. He said, I don't care nothing for this man. Cutting him off. We learned this. When, that, when Abraham came out, after he had delivered the people, the Malak offered him Offer him stuff. He said, I won't take it much as a shoe latchet from you. The strap that go around the sun. He said, unless you say you made me rich. Yep. Abraham came with integrity. He wouldn't take nothing. He said, I won't take nothing from you. A lot of us, first time we get, this, this could be a blessing from God. People said, you know what? You can be missing your blessing. I remember my pal, we didn't keep Christmas. He used to tell, he used to do that. He was a cheap, he was a, he was a scum anyway. We really look at people real hard. Urban Brown, he knew he was scum. He would say, when what they would teach, say, say, we didn't keep Christmas. He said, you know, 
if somebody come up to give you a Christmas gift, he said, although we don't celebrate it, he said, that could be the Lord trying to give you a reward. I'm like, if we don't celebrate the key, why would we be taking a Christmas gift? Because you know what he did? He, should, he loved the wages of unrighteousness. Mm. Oh, he did. He mm. loved it. Oh, listen, you could pay him. He, if it's some money involved, he can get it. He, he can get around it. He'll get around it. But see, it'll always show you up every time. How am I saying that, man? I'm telling the folk it wrong for Christmas, wrong for Christmas. They give me a gift. I take it because that could be the Lord. The Lord is going to use the wrong Christmas to give me something. And the folk up, Merry Christmas, and get it to me. And I'm like, I'm, get, I'm stuck. Listen, now he can use something. You done got something for Christmas and you done lost it. And I done found that money on the ground. I don't know where it came from. That's a baraka to me. <laughs> but he's not finna give me no Christmas envelope through your hands. Merry Christmas. And all I hear, gift of God. Because he just like the rest of them. They love the ways of unrighteousness. They don't hold no standard. They look at, you know, you know God work in mysterious ways. Because they, just like with this man, going back, people always got their own intent and reasoning. That being honest. And, and, and guess what? We get an opportunity now when things come up to really sit back and look. This ain't just me doing something. I got to be careful because you can be misled really because sometimes you want to be misled. Yeah. This, can be your, this can be your excuse. Yeah. I did know. That's why he want to make sure everybody know him. Yeah. That, that's, that's the purpose why I want to just kind of go across it. Because you see, he started off good, like a lot of us do. And over time, you get comfortable. And before you know it, you'll be out of the way. So I encourage myself, as well as all, this is for all of us, to make sure we mindfully know what the will of Allahim is. Yes, sir. That's two.